Yo, welcome to Let's Talk. Here we talk about games, genres, or expansions that are important to me, and which I hope will become important to you as well. In my initial review for FF14, I largely left out talking about Shadowbringer since back then it was still ongoing. Now, technically the main story for the expansion is all wrapped up, but I wanted to do this video after the Hildebrand side quests have been released. But since that won't be for a while, well, let's talk about Shadowbringers. A quick disclaimer, I played this game as a paladin only, and as such, I'll be talking within that scope. Also spoilers. With all of that being said, I do have mixed feelings with the Paladin rework at the start of the expansion. Keep in mind I was still reeling from losing Rage of Halone back in Stormblood, and when I heard all of the changes I was a little bit apprehensive. First off, we lose our Sword Oath and Shield Oath stances. For those unfamiliar, Paladins have a DPS stance and a tank stance. While the new rework gives the class better damage all around, I found it useful to signal to my fellow tank that I'm going off tank with the press of a button. We also lost Flash, which was a blinding AoE that honestly helped in damage mitigation against mobs. Flash was missed, but I didn't have as big as a learning curve relying on the AoE combos instead. But yes, you heard me right. The class got better damage. We got a new Holy Circle AoE skill. In losing the Sword Oath stance, it's now a Sword Oath buff that Paladins get after the regular Royal Authority combo. This unlocks three stacks of a new weapon skill, Atonement, which helps in regaining MP. MP, which you will need for a new magic skill, Confidior, which is a high damage AoE attack you can use after request scan. And finally, we actually get a gap closer with Intervene, and Holy shit, guys, up until this expansion, a Paladin's Gap Closer is Sprint or Eating That Vulnerability. I cannot understate this. This shit feels so good. The world of Shadowbringers itself is beautiful. This world of the first is constantly bathed in light, but also brings a vibrant palette of purples and blues, and it just works. And despite being a world bathed in never-ending light, each area is diverse and unique. Lakeland features ruins and uniquely colored forests. Amarang is no ordinary desert with slanted remnants of civilizations that stood long before the flood happened. Ilmeg is an acid trip. The Tempest is basically the Ruby Sea's underwater section, but with slightly more steroids. The Raktika Greatwood has Aztec ruins and Swampland and Lahi. Kalusha features desolate farmlands and fishing villages and a high cliff that I wish, I wish I could jump off of. There's just so much eyegasm in this world, and apart from a few areas inspired by the real world, it's all very alien. Areas from A Realm Reborn, Heavensward, and Stormblood have their real world inspiration. I can't find that with most of Shadowbringers going from new area to new area, so all of this feels exciting. This is the third expansion, and no one in Square Enix seems to be close to being creatively bankrupt, and that is awesome. Shadowbringers has the distinction of a heavy, collaborative effort poured over a considerable section of the game with Yoko Taro and Nier. As someone who's only watched gameplay of Nier and Drakengard, I was surprised at how these raids played out. Each encounter has mechanics that play more like a Yoko Taro game than FF14, and I commend them for that. Raids have mostly been a strong suit for the game, and this collaboration certainly exceeds those standards, but... And I would like to repeat, I've never played nor experienced Nier, but how its story ended felt so flat. But it also felt so deliberate, to the point where I was looking for some kind of new Raid Plus option, and to do it again, and maybe get an ending Delta or some shit, Again, I've never played Nier, but I know the memes. Maybe actual fans of Yoko Taro's work can enlighten me on this, 
but it just felt pretentious and I hope I'm alone in this. I won't spoil it because I just want more people to experience it for themselves and maybe have a better take than mine. But I will spoil the story of Shadowbringers and if you want none of that you could skip to this point of the vid. At the end of Stormblood, essentially the souls of your friends in the Scions were forcibly summoned into another world, or Crystal in this case. After a bit of legwork, your Warrior of Light manages to travel to this new world, the first, and there you find your friends changed, also unable to travel back with you because it's their souls that were taken there and not their whole bodies. All of this was arranged by the Crystal Exarch who informs you that another calamity is about to happen to this crystal, and if left unchecked, could also destroy the source. I've mentioned before that the base game and the expansions work on one or two encompassing themes, and I think central to the story of Shadowbringers is the theme of loss. You lose your friends, they're essentially husks back in Eorzea, Thancred, Yustola, Alphino, Alize and Urianje lost their bodies and their homes. Newman Philia lost her sense of self like another cog in the wheel of fate. Millions in the first lost homes, futures, loved ones. The antagonists Emmet Selch and Elidibus lost all of what I just listed. The Crystal Exarch himself embodies all of this. As it turns out, he is Grahatia, the man that sacrificed himself to close off the crystal tower, losing an arm, saving this crystal. The theme is a sort of Damocles that hangs over the player, knowing that for each that is lost, many more are to follow. And it wasn't until our Warrior of Light was able to save the first and find a way back home that I realized a second theme was there the entire time. The Scions gained new abilities. Thancred himself lost Menphilia but gained a surrogate daughter in Reen. Yishtola finally found love. Alice gained new knowledge from the first that, guess what, cures what is the Eorzean equivalent of cancer. Alphanode became a much more formidable leader and used that knowledge for a new force of good in Eorzea. The people of the first gained new heroes and ushered in night. The Asians, evil, evil sundered Asians, now live on in our hearts, unforgotten. And Grahatia gains a new loved one in Lena, who he must leave behind. I thought of labeling Shadowbringers as another good, decent expansion, but after writing 80% of this script, I felt that it was more of a journey not just for the player, but for the player's loved ones. Even more so with what's going on in real life. Forget what I said about the paladin changes, world design, or even the new raids. I want you to think about the people in your life and gain a new sense of appreciation for their presence. Not because they may not be here in the next moment, but for the fact that they will grow with you and you with them. But if you have none of these people in your life, know that the journey is long and you will find loved ones eventually. And always remember that you are also loved. I hope you enjoyed Shadowbringers as much as I did. Stay safe. Thanks for watching. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that. Please like, share, and subscribe if you want more FF14 content. You have been warned, there are no guarantees.